Chris, welcome to the Digimedia Dude Expo coverage here at NAB 2016. And you are with? Metal. Metal, Metal Communications out of Montreal. Great, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, this plugin you have for Premiere Pro. Well, we have a whole suite of tools. Some of them are for After Effects and some of them are for Premiere Pro. We started off with um, VR, VR plugins that will deal with text, logos, uh, post effects. We create seamless post effects, which are very important. Um, now what we're introducing at NAB this year is 360 transitions, which we think are extremely important because it starts to help build the vocabulary and narrative for 360, cinematic 360 VR production. So how are 360 transitions different than your standard dissolves and other transitions? So if, for example, you try to use a regular uh, transition, not a dissolve, a dissolve would be very, very simple. Right. Uh, things like random blocks, things like uh, f f fancier than that, and I can give you a quick demo about that, sure. or like an iris swipe, for example. Right, right. What ends up happening is that the iris swipe is built for a linear or a flat format. Right. So as it grows, your, for your iris grows, basically it won't distort properly and it'll fall apart at the top and the bottom of the echo rectangular piece. I see. So what we're doing is we're building it internally so that it works properly. What we're introducing is the transitions, that's new. We've got a VR player that I don't have hooked up right now, but it's a direct to Rift from Adobe products. And what we do is we display, display spherical mode. So if you've got a, a, a montage, an edit done, uh, you can actually put your Rift on and see the whole production in real time. I see. Playing up to 90 frames a second if you have while that. You're, while you're editing. While, and then what we do is we can actually toggle back into the whole workspace or the UI. So if, for example, you want to tweak one section, you don't need to take off your HMD, start playing with it and put it back on and preview again. You can actually switch over to workspace mode do some in-context, in-the-moment design and editing, and it saves you unbelievable amounts of time. Right, right, because you're not rendering out. Yeah. And, okay. So that one's a freebie, by the way. That's a, and what about injecting the metadata that you that, need? That's not something we're going to be doing now, but you I still need to use the YouTube player for that. Well, I think Premiere Pro may be doing that itself. With the new the version. New, yeah, with the new stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you, you'll you have presets already in Premiere Pro that already compressed for YouTube 360 where that was lacking before. Right. So I think they're building that into it and I'm pretty sure they, you can go to the Adobe booth and check out, but I'm pretty sure they've already got that metadata for at least YouTube going. Now, I see. that YouTube metadata is sort of ubiquitous. It'll work in almost all the other players. Right, So that's right. marvelous, it's almost right? like Because it's standard. one less step. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely, because yeah. you've got an output and... Now, what about... So, if I may just add a bit. Sure. Um, so we had plans to actually work through and get the metadata going in, but for the past six months or so, we've been working very closely with Adobe, and we just, just sort of like put things out and said, what are you going to tackle, what are you going to tackle, so that there's no overlap. As soon as we found out that we're doing metadata, well, there's no point, right? Right. right. I mean, the, at the end of the day, it's get the right products to the customer. You know, whether they do it or we do it, it's right. Fine. Now, um, you still need to stitch it before you bring it into Absolutely. Premiere. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so your tool set doesn't do the stitching? No, no, I think there's robust enough offerings out there in, in the well-knowns yeah. uh, to, to do that. And I don't see the advantage of it happening just now in something like Premiere Pro or After Effects. Right. It's, there, there, there's a whole pile of work being done on both products, the Adobe products, that'll make these just that much faster, be able to deal with even bigger data sets uh, so I don't, I wouldn't say never, it's not, never say never basically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it can happen, but short term I don't see any real need for that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Now if people want to find out more about it, where should they go, Chris? Metal.com. So that's www.metal.com. That player that I was describing for the Rift, that's a freebie. So you can download that, have fun with it, play it, use it productively, the ideas that it introduces you to our products and our way of thinking. At the end of the day, we're not engineers. We're production guys. We're workflow guys. This started off as a project a year and a half ago for us where there's no tools. We DIY'd everything and eventually that made its way into the product. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. Thank you.